Heartlands 101, and um, I'm Brenda Webster from Waterfront Toronto, and that's Chris Dunn from the Waterfront Secretariat. Oh, speak. Yes, <laughs> City of Toronto. Okay. Um, this is an overview of um, the Portlands that we're studying today. Uh, it's a thousand acres, and it runs in this particular map from the edge of the Inner Harbor to Leslie Street, and on the north end from the uh, basically the Gardner and the rail line uh, down to the Outer Harbor. This overlay slide, which you saw just moments ago, uh, describes what it would look like if we overlaid the outline of the Portlands uh, onto downtown Toronto. So we could build another city of Toronto uh, in the Portlands area. Uh, the circled area is City Hall and the rectangle is the Metro Toronto Convention Centre at Front Street. Now this land did not exist uh, originally. The edge of Lake Ontario was the solid black line that you can see in the north of the slide uh, and below that is infill. So when you walk around south of Front Street you're actually walking on infill. Uh, pretty much all the way across the edge of the waterfront and certainly the entire Portlands to the east of the Inner Harbor is completely infill. So that gives you a sense of what we're dealing with when we start planning the area, trying to understand what the soil makeup is, you know, where the peat is, where the marsh is b below what has been infilled, um, the industries that came on top of that, what was the nature of them, and how do we begin to look at structurally uh, building up from that foundation. A uh, hundred years ago, pretty much today, uh, someone drew a map about what their vision of the Portlands was. What's interesting to note is that the Toronto Harbour Commission in 1912 determined that there should be some sort of a park element along the edge of Lake Ontario. And today, Waterfront Toronto, we are still have a plan for Lake Ontario Park along the water's edge. And it has its own uh, life, even before the completion of it with Cherry Beach and the Outer Harbor and plenty of cycling and water activities already. Um, and to the north you can see there was this sense of a block pattern very similar to the um, block pattern that exists today. Um, there's some notional um, issues that you should keep in mind as we walk through this. A uh, hundred years ago uh, the ship channel was built. Uh, so we are still dealing with dock walls built out of wood that were built a hundred years ago. So you can imagine that there's quite a bit of repair to be done uh, as we move forward. Uh, we've actually done a dock wall survey of the area uh, and every kilometer something changes in terms of the makeup, how it's built, what the materiality of it is because um, parts of it were built a hundred years ago and then other parts were added on over time um, to uh, lesser or greater um, results. Uh, in the upper right hand corner is Villiers Street which is a lovely street that runs through the northern part of uh, the Portlands and it has a lot of rail lines on it and there are rail spurs running all through the Portlands which of course we would have to deal with moving forward. Rail is a great way to move things but it doesn't always uh, work with future uh, planning uh, ideas about where roads should go. And finally the contamination which is the ever present reality. Uh, the way that things were built, the way that oil was stored. Uh, has left us with an issue that we will be considering and working with for some time to come. Here's an aerial of that condition. Uh, you can see that in the 1930s uh, the oil tanks were still very much in place and the storage of that oil seeped into the ground. Uh, here we're back uh, closer to the 70s. Um, you can see some uh, reclamation work still going on. The industries are dropping down in terms of significance and what's coming up in its place certainly today are things like um, sort of interim uses such as Cirque du Soleil which we get every August and uh, you know the docks and um, uh, you know drive-in movies and uh, driving ranges so all sorts of different uses are cropping up as the city comes closer to this area and wants to use it for recreational purposes. We just like this aerial because it just shows you the proximity to downtown and gives you a sense of what building a neighborhood here would look like relative to where we are um, uh, in relation to the city core. Several planning documents, well you saw 100 years ago, 1912, uh, the Toronto Harbour Commission had their idea and since then um, the city has really been working on how do you unlock the Portlands. Um, 
before 1999, I'll just bring up one other date. 1954, we had something called Hurricane Hazel, which you'll no doubt hear more about upstairs if you go to the, um, uh, the TRCA presentation on the river. Uh, but basically, after that hurricane, we determined that something had to be done um, to make sure that the land was flood protected before we move forward. So this 1999 plan, Unlocking the Portlands, looks at once it's flood protected, how might you use these lands? 2003, the Central Waterfront Secondary Plan, um, which looked at overall how the Central Waterfront might develop. 2005, Portland's implementation strategy narrowed in specifically on the Portlands. Waterfront Community Improvement Plan began to look at um, different areas where there should be support from the city in terms of improving the community, uh, in terms of employment. And then finally, the 2010 Lower Donlands Plan, um, which is the plan that um, is good for all ages uh, and uh, was developed really bringing together concepts of flood protection and infrastructure and how those two could be designed to facilitate uh, a plan for the city. So I'm walking you through each one of these plans. This is the first one. This is the Unlocking the Portlands plan done by the city in 1999. And I'll just walk you from west to east. So of course there's this constant notion that the Keys and Inner Harbor District uh, should be a district of uh, mixed use and that there should be a spine, which is the Cherry Street Corridor, uh, followed by uh, moving the business e district uh, to east of Cherry Street and then finally industrial east from there. Uh, and then to the far east, the Leslie Street Corridor. And over the last uh, few years, we have done some Leslie Street improvements. Um, which have allowed uh, easier access for cycling through to the spit um, and the um, also known as Tommy Thompson Park. So the Central Waterfront Secondary Plan, um, this is again the broad cross city plan uh, marking out the green obviously is the parkland and the beige color is the regeneration area uh, and then there are points of interest marked. Um, the part uh, marked in red is East Bayfront, which is, um, if any of you have been to uh, Sugar Beach or Sherburn Common, those are within the East Bayfront area. It's adjacent to the Portlands. To the north is uh, West Donlands uh, in blue. And then the rest, sort of southeast from there, is the Portlands area. So the Community Improvement Plan for the Waterfront in 2008 um, was part of a, a larger strategy to look at, um, you know, where could work be done to support um, uh, community improvements such as uh, Cordis, which is now uh, in East Bayfront, uh, and the George Brown College, which is next to it, um, West Donlands, and south of Eastern, and parts of the Portlands. Now, the parts that are um, marked in a hatched line were parts that were not focused on, specifically because the Lower Donlands plan was underway, and we didn't want to really bring businesses down there when we were still determining how to plan, how to move forward with the future. Now, you saw a plan similar to this, but slightly different. If you remember in this plan, you can see the river is really kind of going under the gardener. It's kind of um, connected um, and sort of, you can, can everybody see where the river is there? We're Keating, shall I point to it to give you clarity here? So the river is coming through under the gardener, which um, is kind of a difficult place for the river to come through. So that was 2003. When you move forward to 2010, you see what's happened is that there's this notion that perhaps the river should be freed and taken away from out under the gardener and given its own space and be kind of a heart, a kind of a center for communities or to build around it. Leave Keating, since Keating um, is a kind of historic uh, piece of our landscape now, and perhaps use it as a more um, urbane uh, relationship to the water. Um, and here we want to walk you through just what exists around the Portlands that might affect it. We have to consider East Bayfront, which is well underway right now, West Donlands, which is where the Pan Am Village is being built for 2015, uh, South of Eastern, which we see as an employment district, and then finally the TTC um, light rail uh, storage area, which creates a great synergy because if you think Union Station is to the west and this LRB station is to the east, it um, gives great opportunity for us to bring a higher order of transit through this area. So the first piece that I uh, pointed out going, whoops, going from East Bayfront to the east, East Bayfront uh, is 
is uh, planned and well underway, and we have built, who's been to Sugar Beach? Did I ask this question already? Yes, okay. Uh, so um, there's Sugar Beach. This is East Bayfront, and here's a rendering of East Bayfront uh, from an aerial position. There's uh, Sugar Beach, and there's Sherburn Common. Um, here's Chorus, uh, already built. George Brown, September 2012, we will have our first uh, group of students entering this building. Very exciting to have students so close to the waterfront and taking advantage of our park. And then Heinz Development, um, which was just uh, signed with the city a couple of days ago, which is going to begin. So East Bayfront is well underway. West Donlands, uh, that was a plan that Waterfront Toronto started, and we had our own kind of schedule, and then Pan Am came along, and we sort of sped up our schedule quite a bit so that we could make it um, the first phase of West Donlands um, in here, the Athletes' Village for the Pan Am Games. So that's a very exciting initiative as well. Uh, the south of Eastern, quick facts. Um, what's going on here is that there's an employment study uh, for the area south of Eastern and north of Lakeshore, and there are potential synergies to actually connect south of Lakeshore and allow Lakeshore to be a spine. The same way that we had that uh, evolution on Cherry, where we saw residential on one side and then decided to have it on the other as well. We're looking now at employment to the north of Lakeshore and on the south as well. Waterfront um, uh, servicing master plan is happening to the north of the Portlands, and the huge advantage to us is that we can uh, build off of that. We know that Carlaw is the street of interest that could be brought down through to the Portlands for servicing that area. <coughs> so what are the constraints? We lie within a flood zone. Um, we need uh, extensive remediation, poor ground conditions, virtually little, very little infrastructure down here, and really no access in terms of roads, transit, and wastewater to a level that one would need for neighborhood development. Here is a map of the flood zone. So should Hurricane Hazel occur, the 300 square kilometer um, uh, flood uh, water uh, coming down the Don River would flood this entire uh, area within the Portlands and east of Leslie. Finally, why are we here? Because, in fact, it's an incredible strategic waterfront asset. <coughs> the more, majority of the lands are in public ownership. There's an opportunity for quick and efficient transit because of Union Station. And um, we already have parkland underway and we plan more parkland through this area. And finally, we um, can build on emerging creative industries which already exist in the Portlands. This map really shows you just how much land is in public ownership that we can work with. Only the yellow is in private ownership. So there's significant land to work with without having to do any expropriation. In fact, the river goes completely through uh, municipal lands, which is extremely useful. So, why are we doing this work? Well, September of last year, uh, City Council unanimously endor endorsed a protocol <coughs> for Waterfront Toronto, City of Toronto, and TRCA to work together to build on a business and implementation plan for the Portlands and review options for the Don Map. So we've been working with um, our consultants, uh, and uh, we began this process in October of last year, and now we're in public consultation process with everybody here. And before we met with you, we also met with landowners and land users, as well as specific stakeholders. <coughs> and finally, next steps. By the end of April, our consultants will be coming back to us with their draft reports. Um, we'll have additional consultation near the end of April. And finally, early May probably as well. Uh, June 12th, um, the city staff report will be written and it will go to executive committee. Now that is the date for everybody in the public to be able to depute to the city. So that's the day when you also get your say in a public forum. Finally, July 11th and 12th, with the report and the deputations, city council will consider that staff report and make a decision. And the final step is, based on that decision, should there be a decision to go forward with the Don Mouth EA, in other words, to submit it for approval, 
Um, we have until October 28th for that decision to be made. So we have paused the Don Maggie until October 28th. Yeah,